Welcome to my introduction to networking course, typically abbreviated ITN. This will be for the CCNA version 7 curriculum. Welcome. This is going to be Packet Tracer Lab 10.3.5 Troubleshooting Default Gateways. So first thing I'm going to do is modify my screen so everything is readable. You may have this, you may have a Word document or PDF, it really just depends on the version of Packet Tracer. I'm using version 8.2 which gives me this little embedded guy. The reason I'm bringing that up is because I have the instruction guide off of my screen. That way I can keep referring back to this address chart. I just put it in Word because we're going to be filling out the default gateway details. So with that said, we have two objectives, verify, document, and isolate problems, and then implement, verify, and document solutions. Read through the background. Work through uh, that portion. And what we're going to do is work through this. In part one of this activity, complete the uh, process. Can PC1 ping PC2? Can PC1 ping switch 1? So let's work through this. PC1. Desktop. Command line. PC2 is 192.168. PC2 10.11. No ping. And at the at this particular moment, we don't know why. We're going to have to work through and understand why. Piece, uh, ping switch 1 192.168.10.2 So I can't get to my neighbor. I can't get to my switch. And it does say that I don't have a default gateway. I just chart PC1, no default gateway. So we need to look at some details. IP config. Happens to be that my address should be 192.168.10.10. And in reality, it's set to 11.10, meaning I'm on the wrong network. So how do we fix this? Go back to desktop, IP configuration, fix your IP address. Now, let's try to do this again. Can I ping my neighbor? Yes, I can. Can I ping my switch? I'll remember first one is ARP request that may time out, but then it should respond. All right, so what about PC1 to R1? Well, R1 is 192.168.10.1. And it can do that. So, we did create this, we went through and we re verified all of this. Test connectivity to remote devices, like PC4. Well, I don't have a default gateway. Do I? IP config. Oh, default gateway is there. So let's try to ping PC4, 192.168.11.11. Alright, 
that doesn't work. That's all right. Part of this is, can I ping router two? Router, sorry, the other interface, so 11.1. So I can get from PC1 to R1, I can get PC1 to the other network. Can I get to the switch on the second network, 11.2? Again, first one might be an ARP request, I don't know. Well, it looks like it's more than that. And that's all right. So we need to figure out what's going on. So using our knowledge for the way networks operate and your device configuration skills, search for the causes of the problems. For example, switch one is not causing connectivity issues between one and two. We've already fixed that. Verify a device addressing to ensure it matches network documentation. We already did that. Suggest a solution that you need uh, to think and resolve the problem. Uh, for PC1, we, we already talked and did that. Often there is more than one solution. However, with its troubleshooting, it's about best practices. All right, we've already done all that. In part two of this activity, you will implement the solutions for part one and verify the solutions worked. Refer to the documentation and choose our process. Were we able to fix it? Yes. We were able to go from PC1 to PC2. So verify the solution by pinging. We did. If you still have any outstanding issues, return to part one and go through them. Can PC1 ping PC4. So we're going to have to do some information, we have to do some digging. So PC1 cannot ping PC2 because PC1 has the IP address that belongs to a different network. We've already fixed that. Uh, cannot ping switch 2 because switch 2 can't switch 2 ping anything else. So let's check that out. PC3, can I ping PC4, ping, 192.168.11.11. Yes, I can. Can I ping the switch? Again, first one might be ARP. If the second one times out, then we know there's another problem. All right, so we know that there is an issue with switch two. So let's hop over to the switch. Enable, show IP int brief. There should be an IP address on our VLAN and there's nothing so let's go ahead and configure that conf t interface VLAN 1 IP address 192.168.11.2 do no shut Well, our completion rate went up, so that was clearly one problem. Let's try to ping our switch again. All right, so we've now fixed that. Can PC1 ping PC4? It still looks like no.
All right, so can I ping PC from PC1 to the second switch? All right, I got two. Let's do it again to make sure we have our connectivity. All right. So, we can go from PC1 to the R1, we're going to go PC1 to switch 2. So, we have to investigate a little further. On our router, can we ping PC4? Yes, we can. So, there's clearly some communication. So, I'm going to go to PC4 get to my command line IP config here's the address here's the subnet oh wrong default gateway which means it won't be able to leave its local network IP configuration that should be 11.1 .1. all right so let's try doing that again can PC 1 ping PC4 and it looks like yes it can all right so PC1 can talk to switch 1 talk to switch 2 can talk to R1 let's do that in reverse Ping 192.168.10.1 or 10.10. .10. Can PC4 talk to PC1? Yes, it can. Can PC4 talk to the LAN side of the first network? Yes, it can. Can it talk to the switch? Oh, looks like we found the last issue. Let it time out. All right, so let's look at switch one and switch two. Enable. And all right, show run. Oh, this one has an additional command, IP default gateway, where switch one doesn't have it. We need to put the correct network, 10.1, because that's the exit point. And we'll now show a completion of 100%. Let's double check that PC4 can now ping the switch. And there we go. We now have connection from PC1 through all the devices to PC4. And in reverse, PC4 can communicate with all the devices going up. All right, that's it for this lab. Thank you. If you have any questions or anything, please feel free to reach out. Again, with this material, being able to ask questions and discuss some of the topics in the lecture help build long-term retention, so do not be afraid to, to communicate with this topic. Again, I'm here if you need anything. Thank you.